we are introducing our players to Ember Bay, one of the new land masses that have kind of come up and changed over the last 250 years. So Ember Bay is uh, a pretty different map, just hostile, burning uh, wasteland of rock. I actually worked on the same level about 12 years ago in Guild Wars 1. So I got to give it the new treatment with all our cool new props and effects. It's a pretty cool map because it's the first time in quite a while we've been back to a seaside environment. And also, this map is really metal. I made a, I made a skull, I made a horn, kind of weird scraggly jaw that didn't quite look like a jaw, but like it just needed to look like it was something. And then um, kind of went back and just saw what Josh had done with it. He was just like, created different types of skulls with different kinds of horns, and then he he did something super awesome. He created what I like to call the Well of Souls. You just go up into this like caldera and there's just this mountain of like leering demonic skulls just like looking down at you. This place is like to the cover of some really insane Tyrion heavy metal album. It's really over the top uh, and really fun in that way. So the skull theme it was really cool, right up my alley, because I'm a big fan of heavy metal and that kind of stuff, so I really got off on doing as metal a version of that map as possible. So lots of skulls, just weeping lava and smoke and brimstone, and all that kind of fun thematic dark broodiness. One of our biggest, our biggest challenges was trying to create a mastery for this whole area that, uh, you know, felt fun and unique for Fire Island, but you know, that necessarily other, other areas of lava may not have. We have, I think, most of the previous movement-based masteries. There's jump mushrooms, updrafts, there's a big ley line roller coaster, um, as well as a new mastery uh, that we're calling thermal tubes, which uh, basically shoot you out of a lava cannon to hundreds of yards away. Um, it's really fun, you catch fire, it's great. We wanted this map to be a little more exploration-based, uh, and so that hearts seemed like a good way to do that. And the hearts this time are repeatable uh, to give people, you know, so that you know you're not sort of one and done. You can find, and there's a bunch of different ways to uh, complete each heart, so you might, you know, try different things on different days. Because we're in an ocean environment, it was fun to bring back some creatures that haven't seen a lot of play in a while. So notably, in part of the map, uh, the Karka have sort of taken up residence. And we know some players really, really appreciate fighting the Karka. Um, so it was cool to be able to have like a really different environment from South Sun to be able to let them inhabit and wander around in. We usually put the jumping puzzles in last, so I kind of had this spot reserved for it. And I started building it, and contrary to popular belief, I actually don't like making difficult jumping puzzles. But the aesthetic really demanded a just brutal um, jumping puzzle. So there's several vectors along which we can make a jumping puzzle challenging. The obvious one is is the distance, you know, how far you got to jump, how difficult those jumps are. But then in additional to that, it's discovery. It's finding where do I actually jump? And then on top of that, you can have the skills that you have to use, the enemies that may be around and all that kind of stuff. So we really cranked up the sliders on almost all of those. So um, it ended up earning its name of Chalice of Tears. The island and, and just trying to come up with creative gameplay spaces and an environment where everything is trying to kill you is, is, was a fun challenge to work with.